Hello you beautiful and handsome commanders, I know what you're here for and I'll spare you the intro and let's get right into it. With Drem's addition to the collab, we now finally have the best collab unit to date, which historically speaking doesn't say much given the track record of the previous collab characters. However, what if we instead say that this unit is quite possibly the strongest standalone burst 2 in the game right now? To add to that, she also has the capability to heal and on top of that, the buff she has is just an icing on the cake. Although this buff is limited to rocket launchers, this buff is still nonetheless a good buff that opens up the future rocket launchers that might be an offset like Scarlet Black Shadow. There's two main things that Rem provides and one minor thing with the current units right now. One, she provides an extremely high DPS for a healer and we're talking about a DPS that can rival top DPS units. If she can land even a better overload lines than Ludmilla, she can actually even out DPS her. 2. By being a burst 2 unit that's also a healer that is also standalone, this allows you to have a third DPS aside from the two burst trees that doesn't typically require bursting to get their potential. For example, Modernia or Scarlet or even Guilty. You could even slot in A2 where you burst with her once and then never burst again. This allows you to run a very offensive setup with front loaded with many DPS. With all the things considered, her kit of buffing rocket launcher is actually optional. If the content doesn't demand for rocket launchers, you can easily opt out of bringing in any rocket launchers and just put in 3 other major DPS along with her. What Rem provides to the table is that even though she's not buffing other units that great, she makes it up by providing huge damage on her own. This makes her even out with the offensive support that other burst 2 support units provide, like Novel who provides an insane buff as a standalone burst 2. Her also providing heals and not needing a secondary unit like Naga or Tutia or Blank to Noir puts her amongst the top tier burst 2 units. On top of that, if you have 3 properly invested DPS, this actually puts her to the Team 2 category just below Tia Naga combo and above Blanc and Noir. This definitely puts her in the must pull category and I highly advise getting at least one copy of her. I can see many competitive people getting max limit break of her and top end players getting core 7. She opens up a lot of opportunity for flexibility due to her versatile kit. Now let's talk about her skills. This is a very simple breakdown of her. Skill 1 provides her with more personal DPS and also by virtue of doing more DPS also provides more healing. Skill 2 straight up just gives her more healing. But the more DPS you do, the more healing you do. Burst gives her more personal DPS and more buff to other rocket launchers. Like I mentioned earlier, the main factor for using Rem is her DPS. Skill 1 is a high priority for her as this will provide her with more DPS and also indirectly will provide more healing. Maxing this out gave me about 20% more damage increase and I will try to max this out at least. Meanwhile for skill 2, even though upgrading this skill will make you heal more, it actually might not be even necessary to upgrade this too high. Since doing more damage will make you heal more, just simply by upgrading skill 1 and burst, it will also make her heal better. So upgrading skill 2 is actually not very necessary and it's fine to be kept at level 4. Now if you somehow feel the healing is still not enough, I would try to first see if you can upgrade Rem's overall damage via the other skills first and also the gears and overload lines. Once you've exhausted those options and still find healing not enough, then that's when I'll say to skill this up more. But again, last option to upgrade. For burst, as I've mentioned before, buff is a secondary factor when considering her. That is right now for the current units that are out. You don't have to bottleneck yourself on selecting rocket launchers when using her. Due to Scarlet Black Shadow's high attack multiplier, the buff she gets from Rem could be minimal depending on how high your investment is with her. The weaker your Scarlet is, that is, perhaps like low core duplicates or also low attack percentage on the overloads, then the more effect the Rem's burst would have on her. But for people with high investment on their Scarlet Black Shadow, they might see minimal buff provided coming from Rem. For other rocket launchers like A2 and Emilia, Rem will be good due to their low attack percentage skill modifiers. However, if the content or the boss doesn't really demand for their efficiency as AoE rocket launchers, then it's better to opt into a more suited DPS for that boss like for example Red Hood or Ludmilla. 
Since there's some opportunities where burst could not be utilized to its full potential, having a medium priority on this skill is fine. The range of the suggested investment for a burst actually varies. If you don't plan to use Scarlet Black Shadow here or don't have the capacity right now to invest in other rocket launchers and plan on investing on them, then you can leave the burst at around level 7. It's a nice middle point of investing Rem, where she'll also get the benefit of getting her damage increase. But here's another thing to consider that might make you push her to more on upgrading the burst further since this buff increases your critical rate if you actually get more critical rolls on your overload especially critical damage then you could consider upgrading the burst skill more personally due to her high versatility i foresee a lot of use of her i would recommend maxing this burst out as you'll get your mileage work but if you're starving for resources i can see keeping it at level 7. For skill recommendations, for budget, I would look into having at least level 7 to 10 on skill 1, level 4 on skill 2, and level 4 to 7 for burst for REM, depending on your available resource and if you're planning to save for some resources for future units, then you might invest accordingly. Making the most use out of her means bringing in 3 other good DPSs to make up for the lack of significant burst 2 buff from the units like Blank or Naga or Novel. And if you don't have those high DPS characters upgraded yet, then you should prioritize those first. For my recommendation, I would go with level 10 skill 1, level 4 skill 2, and between level 7 to 10 for burst. As I mentioned before, her burst range depending on whom you plan on using with her, and also kind of like your overload luck. And competitive will likely go with 10 for 10. As a final note, I would upgrade skill 2 more after upgrading skill 1 and burst. Should after maxing both skill 1 and burst and you're still not able to fully heal your team, then upgrading skill 2 is now something to consider after those. I could see some situation depending on the account and the content where upgrading her skill 2 would be opted in. For overloads, Rem has high attack percentage coming from her skill 1 so attack percentage rolls will have diminished effect on her. That is not to say that attack percentage is bad though, but if you have to choose an option between say max ammo line or attack percentage and you still don't have at least 2 max ammo line, then I would prioritize having the max ammo line. Since she's also a high DPS unit, we can definitely count on her as one of the top options for DPS as the water element. So definitely getting elemental damage is highly recommended for her as well as it might affect your choice of the team who's going to be used against the water weak boss in Union Raid. On top of that, she'll also be highly valued on Solar Raid especially for water weak boss. I would look into having at least 2 max ammo line valuing at at least 50% each. Ideally, would be 3 lines of max ammo and having 4 lines of max ammo is optimal for her. Generally speaking though, having a balance of max ammo and attack is the optimal way to build her. With ammo being the slightly better option over attack up until around 3 ammo lines. Another valid stat to consider is also critical damage. The higher your burst skill is, the more valuable critical damage roll is in overload. I would still not replace ammo or attack for critical damage though, but this is a just a good consolation prize if you don't have anything else. The issue stems from the core damage bonus heavily favoring attack percentage over critical damage. Without core bonus damage, critical damage is getting closer to attack percentage, but it's still not enough to close the gap. Other than that, critical rate is another option, but that's pretty much it. For cube, it's pretty much just Bastion as that's the best cube especially for machine guns. If you are somehow using her in Privati team with Dorothy on the last bullet team, you can actually opt in with Resilience if you don't have any max ammo lines on her. And finally, for teams and units. As mentioned earlier, Rem basically opens yourself up to three main DPS teams. Actually including her, it would be 4. One of the strongest setup on neutral element I've had was actually using Litter, Ram, Scarlet Black Shadow, Ludmilla, and Modernia. This team is just front loaded with damage and because of how Ludmilla debuffs the enemy and we also basically have 4 DPS in this team, Ludmilla's effectiveness is just insane in this team setup. These DPS tend to be standalone and don't necessarily need support to deal a lot of damage. I would then do slight tweaks on this team setup depending on the boss or the units I have left. For example, taking advantage of the elemental advantage. 
From here, you can basically replace Modernia with the regular Scarlet, as they both are units that typically don't need to burst to get their potential. A2 can also be in this slot, where you can set it up where you can only have A2 burst once and enable her mode B, and then proceed to never burst with her again, as Ram can keep her HP topped up. This slot could also be put in for other support like Drake, Maxwell, Alice, Yulha, or Ludmilla. Oh by the way, one thing I'd like to emphasize though is when using units that buff the highest attacks like Alice and Maxwell and there's only two limited units, Sims Rem has a high self attack buff for herself due to her skill 1, she'll likely take one of the buffs as well. So you need to be wary which units are the ones that are getting those Alice and Maxwell buffs. And then moving on to the burst 3 bursters in Scarlet Black Shadow slot and Ludmilla slot, these are also flexible which are pretty much any burst 3 units. We're looking at Red Hood, Alice, Maxwell, Snow White, Scarlet, Summer Nice. Let's not forget rocket launchers like Laplace, Emila, and A2. Some combo you could be using on these would be any B1 with Scarlet Black Shadow and Alice or Maxwell plus E Flex DPS or using like Red Hood, Alice, and Maxwell alongside with DS Buffer with Pierce Bonus, Dorothy with Ludmilla and Summer Nice and Privity, or you could play Summer Nice and Privity with Emilia and a flex unit for water-oriented team. Dorothy with Summer Nice, Scarlet, and Privity is also another viable option for electric team. By the way, across all of these different teams, you could pretty much interchange the burst 1 option with any of the meta burst 1 cooldown reduction like Litter, Volume, Dorothy, and D. With Rem's addition to the lineup, she pretty much opens up team 2 a bit wide more open. For a while now, since T and Naga have taken the banner of Team 1, the Bunny's team have been relegated to Team 2. With Rem also, she has the potential to take over Team 1 position when we get more high value DPS and support that's not located in the Burst 2 category. One of the biggest weaknesses of T and Naga and the Bunnies is that currently they're bottlenecked due to having two primary DPS only. But with Rem on the table, she opens up having 3 other primary DPS and then including her which basically makes it equivalent to 4 DPS in a single team. With Burst 1 category currently lined up for the support cooldown reduction, this is where the main potential we see right now. Another thing that's not taken into account is if we somehow end up with a Burst 1 and Burst 3 duo units and even more icing on the cake is if they have somehow cooldown reduction in their kit as well. That will make Rem shine more as well. Overall, Rem provides a very flexible position to the overall roster right now. She fills in a much desirable spot without demanding much in return, just like the loyal maid she is. I love Rem. <clears throat> in any case, what are your guys' thoughts on her? Did you pull for Rem? How many pulls did it take you? Did you know that it took me 360 pulls just to get the first one? If you decide to not pull for her, why is that? Are you still coping for the half anniversary? Despite all the things I said here, I just want to say that this is a collab unit and we have no idea if we're getting a rerun at all, so this could be your last chance. Hashtag totally not FOMO. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I do stream often in my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash skyjlv, so make sure to come and join and follow that channel as well. I do stream sometimes simultaneous on streams on YouTube, but I set my YouTube streams to be a little bit more event or new content based. So when just hanging out and chilling, I am available in Twitch. And for those that want to do account reviews, we have a points system set up where I can review your account and provide advice. The points are easily obtained simply via watching the channel and it's completely free. You can check out my other character guide as well on the channel or you can check out this other video of a fun account review. Anyways, that's about it for me for now and I'll see you guys next time.